This is a short video about the rectus sheath formation. Rectus sheath is nothing but a sheath which is formed by the aponeurosis of the external oblique aponeurosis, internal oblique aponeurosis and the transverse apon abdominis aponeurosis. All these three aponeuroses they join together and forms the rectus sheath. So it lies over the rectus abdominis muscle. So it lies completely on the rectus, rectus abdominis muscle, complete length of the rectus abdominis muscle anteriorly. But posteriorly it will not be a complete one. Upper th two third is a complete one. But see look at the upper two third is a complete one. But the lower one third is not a complete one. So posteriorly it is not complete. We will see how the rectus sheath is formed. Before going to the rectus sheath proper, you should know all the three important aponeuroses and really number one external oblique see look at the green color number two is internal oblique look at the light green color and number three is the transverse abdominis you can see it in the different green color so three things you have seen now this is the rectus abdominis muscle this is the posterior sheath and these three things they form the anterior sheath so how the rectus sheath is formed we will see first three levels we have to see one is above the costal margin second is above the arcuate line and the third is below the arcuate line what is that arcuate line i have already told you the rectus sheath is not complete in the lower part so in that you have a curved line called by the name arcuate line so just above the arcuate line and above the costal cartilage how it is formed so costal margin this is the costal margin look at the costal margin <coughs> sorry above the costal margin means this area above only the external obli oblique aponeurosis alone is there so above the costal margin the rectus sheath is formed only by the external oblique aponeurosis no other no one else is there so above the costal margin means just above this only the rectus sheath is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis then posteriorly what is there posteriorly just behind the external oblique aponeurosis who is there everywhere you could see the costal cartilage only so posteriorly you will be having the costal cartilage so you can see the costal cartilage posteriorly none of the muscles are present in between okay so this is the first layer above the costal margin so above the costal margin only external oblique aponeurosis is formed then second thing is above the arcuate line i have told you know one line only in the lower one third you will be having a line called arcuate line so the above the arcuate line what are the structures forming the anterior layer of the rectus sheath so before that you should know one thing all these aponeurotic layers are bilaminar bilaminar means two lamina are there two sheets will be there for each aponeurosis so here i could show you only one because it is the first layer so both the layers has been merged so you could see only one paper okay but if you see that next layer internal oblique will be divided into two lamina this is called anterior lamina which is anteriorly placed you could see the posterior lamina which is deeply placed this is the posterior lamina and this is the anterior lamina of the external oblique you could see the color light green color so this is the anterior lamina of the rectus sheath so the anterior layer is formed by so what are the structures forming the anterior layer external oblique aponeurosis and the anterior lamina of internal oblique so posteriorly who are all there posteriorly posterior layer of what is this internal oblique okay this light green color indicates internal oblique and posteriorly this color green olive green indicates transverse abdominis so posterior sheath is formed by number one posterior lamina of internal oblique aponeurosis of transverse abdominis and behind this this fascia is called transversalis fascia understood so posterior layer is formed by these structures right number two below the arcuate line so it means this is the arcuate line so the below the arcuate line the layers are formed by so below the arcuate line if you see rectus sheath this is the anterior wall of the rectus sheath formed by number one external oblique number two internal oblique number three transverse abdominis all the three fellows will be coming anteriorly number one external oblique number two internal oblique number three transverse abdominis then who is posteriorly placed posteriorly only this yellow color yellow color indicates rectus transversalis fascia so yellow color indicates transversalis fascia so posterior sheath is one of one formed only by the transversalis fascia that's all about the rectus sheath formation in brief so while writing in the exam you have to write rectus sheath is placed just above the rectus abdominis so it anteriorly it extends the entire length of the rectus abdominis 
but posteriorly it is present only in the upper two third not in the lower one third so the different uh, the delineating point is called as arcuate line so you have to complete this sentence first and then all the three this rectus sheath is formed by the aponeurosis of external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis you have to talk about these three aponeuroses and then all the three aponeuroses are bilaminar you have to write this point next point <coughs> next point you have to write first above the costal margin above the costal margin means none of the other muscles will be coming because only the external oblique aponeurosis will be coming from there so above the costal margin you should write only the external oblique you see no nobody else is there because internal oblique is coming down and the transverse abdomen is also coming down so you cannot write all these muscles so only you have to write external oblique so number one above the costal margin write only the external oblique posterior to the rectus sheath you have to write so posterior to the rectus abdomen is posterior layer what will you write this one costal cartilage number two is the middle layer between the umbilicus and the costal margin so umbilicus pubic symphysis umbilicus costal margin it means just above the arcuate line above the arcuate line what are the layers anteriorly number one external oblique number two is only one layer is here internal oblique anterior lamina is here you could see the posterior lamina posteriorly so always you should write anterior and posterior so i will write here <coughs> sorry anteriorly above the costal margin you should write external oblique aponeurosis posteriorly what you should write posteriorly posterior lamina is behind the rectus abdomen is what is there only costal cartilage so you should write costal cartilage and number two above the arcuate line anteriorly what you will write external oblique number one and internal oblique which lamina will write anterior lamina so external oblique aponeurosis and internal oblique aponeurosis only which lamina anterior lamina so posteriorly what will you write posteriorly posteriorly you should write see posterior to the rectus abdomen is what you can see green color light green light green liquids internal oblique internal oblique which lamina posterior lamina of internal oblique and this color indicates transverse abdominis this one indicates transverse abdominis so we'll write these two so posteriorly you should write internal oblique aponeurosis posterior lamina and plus transverse abdominis aponeurosis right finished so below the arcuate line what will you write below the arcuate line means you can see the arcuate line here look at the arcuate line below the arcuate line anterior sheath is formed by number one external oblique number two internal oblique number three is transverse abdomen so all these three layers will be coming anteriorly so who is lying posteriorly nobody is there none of the aponeurosis are there only transsalis fascia is there so we have to write that so anteriorly all the aponeurosis external oblique aponeurosis internal oblique aponeurosis transverse abdomen aponeurosis all are anteriorly placed and posteriorly you will be having the transversalis fascia what is the content of that content is rectus abdominis muscle and the anastomosis of superior epigastric artery and inferior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery is a branch of internal thoracic artery and inferior epigastric artery is a branch of external iliac artery this will be asked that's all about the rectus sheath formation